Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Based on African Motives, uh, still on Industrial Electronics N3, working on revisions that is on DC theory. We have a question paper that you're going to be working with from November 2017. We are given on Kirchhoff's laws to study on number on figure one below and formulate uh, from it an equation which supports Kirchhoff's law. So we are supposed to formulate an equation. Uh, as long as it supports the Kirchhoff's law in terms of current. So from our current law, we know that the sum of currents flowing into or towards the junction is equal to the sum of current flowing away, or the algebraic sum of currents is equal to zero. If we add everything, we get a zero. Okay, so if you are to check I1 and I2, they are flowing towards our junction, this one. So if we add I1 to I2, this is equal to this Two, I3 and uh, I4, they are flowing away. They are flowing away from the junction. So this is going to be I3 plus I4. So you can have it uh, as an equation like this, you are done. Or, or you can, uh, from formulating that the sum of currents must be equal to, must be equal to zero. That means we can uh, uh, transpose these two to the other side. That means I1, plus I2 minus, if we transpose everything uh, on the other side, this is going to be minus I3 plus I4 like this must be equal to zero. So take note, we can have it from this consideration. So that was just two marks for that, uh, for you to, uh, to give an equation from the presentation that you are given in this case. All right, so let's check the other part of the question. Uh, where now we are given to start uh, fig two below and use again the Kirchhoff's laws to determine the values of currents, uh, the current I1 and I2, the currents in the circuit use only loop. We are given the loops to consider uh, in this case, D, A, B, C, D, and the other loop. So this is what we have and we've got 10 marks for that. So if you have to take note in this case, we are already given the current. I just want to summarize this. So I just want to have a, a, a a look on the diagram so that we can uh, see how we have to answer. We are given the current, some of the currents we are given as the numerical values. This is I2 uh, and R8 ohm resistor. If we move on to this part here, we have got uh, I2, which minus 0, 0,8 and the 6 ohm. Uh, if we are to move to this part, we are given I1 minus zero. So each part is given its current, the current that is flowing in each branch. So let's take a closer look on the loops that you are given uh, so that we can see how to attempt. So I'm going to, uh, to start with the first part here. We are given to use the loop uh, that is uh, from loop uh, D. So this is loop D, A, B, uh, C, back to D again. Okay, so let's trace this loop and see from D, to A, uh, to B, to C, this, the outer, this is the outer loop, the outside, this one, the outer part here, this one, the outer part of the loop, this is the one that we have to, the outer, the outside part every, so which means you are focusing with the outer part only, this is what you're going to, to have. All right, so let's take, we've got the voltage in this case, which means this, this voltage of 12, this 12, so in order for us to, I'm just going to write the equation straightforward, okay? So the 12 volts that we see is going to be the product of the current and uh, the resistors, okay? So I want us to consider something here in terms of our branches. If you had to check the first branch uh, here, for, we start from D, this branch here from D, from D to point A, this is D to A, we have got uh, I2, with eight ohm resistor. So it's going to be current terms, which is eight times I2. So this is going to be eight I2. All right, from point A to point B, there is current I2 minus 0, 0,8. So this is going to be plus, we are still following the direction of the current. So it's going to be a plus. We are going in the same direction. So that's six ohms uh, times this current to, minus uh, 0, 0,8. So that's minus, we, we are given is at I2 minus 0, 0,8. All right. We move on from the branch of B to point C. There's another current there, I1 minus 0, 0,8 and a resistor of eight. So this is flowing in the same direction we are maintaining. So it's going to be eight uh, times this current, 
which is I1 minus 0, 0,8. We move to the last part from C to D, from C to D, that is 4 ohms with I1. So we are going to have plus 4 times I1. All right, so that's what we had, guys, from this one. Okay, then we can expand everything, collect like terms, whatever that we have. So this is 6 times I1. It's a positive, so it's going to give uh, 6 I2, 6 times I2, 6 times minus 0, 0,8, which is going to give us minus 4, 8, uh, 8 times I1, which is 8 I1. Uh, 8 times minus 0, 0,8 is going to give us minus 6, 4. So this is minus 6, 4 plus 4 I1 like this. So we have formulated the equations. What we need is to just uh, collect the terms together so that we can have this as a final uh, equation. So this is what you're going to have. 12 is equal to, let's collect our terms together. So we've got I1, uh, this 8 I1 plus 4i2, these are like terms, so it's 4 plus 8, which is uh, 12 in this case, so this is going to give us 12i1. We move on to i2, this is 8i2, 6i2, so it's 8 plus uh, 6, which is going to give us 14, so this is going to be plus 14i2. Uh, then we have got uh, the numbers uh, that are left, we have got uh, minus 4, 8, and minus 6,4. So if you subtract these two, minus 4,8, minus 6,4, we are going to obtain minus 11,2. So we can transpose uh, from this part, we can transpose this minus 11,2 to the other side of the equation. So it's going to be plus 11,2. So that means we are going to obtain uh, 23,2, which is equal to these two, which is 12 I1, plus uh, 14 I2 in this case. So we have an equation, we are done from this part, we have formulated from the loop that we were given as uh, uh, D, A, B, C to D, this loop that we used uh, uh, from this part. Okay, sorry for that. Sorry for that in this case, all right. So we used this part of the loop, all right. So now we are going to the other part of the question here. We are given to consider this time loop D, uh, A, C, B, uh, C, D in this case, all right? So I'm going to check for this loop here. So let me just write it aside. So it's the loop uh, D, A, C, D. All right, so I'm going to remove the, this other part that we had so that you can properly see this one, uh, D, A. Uh, that is uh, from the point D here to A to mm. C back to D, which means we are focusing with this inside of the loop. So I'm going to remove this part so that we can properly see this loop. All right, so let's see what you're going to, to have. So this is going to be taken uh, this way. So I want to be very careful here uh, from the point D, this one, to A, so you're going to refer to A, uh, to C, then back to D this way. So this is the loop that you are going to use. So in this loop, we have a voltage uh, there, which is 12. So still applying the same concept that this voltage is going to be the product of the currents. So uh, this branch from D up to A, we talked about this one. It's uh, 8 times I2. It's not going to change. So this is 8 I2, just like the previous one. But we are going to take now from the point A, to the point C, in this branch of A to C, there is a current which is given, this current that you see here, uh, which is given as uh, uh, the 0, 0,8, this one, uh, so that you, this one that we see on this part, that one is the current for this branch. It's maintaining in the same direction, so it's a positive, so it's going to be positive uh, 0, 0,8, times the resistance, there is current, there is resistance at the same time. So you multiply the two, all right? Plus, we move on from this branch of C uh, back to D. We are having the same consideration just like the previous one. We have I1 in the same direction with our current flow. So it's going to be four times I1. So this is going to give us uh, for I1 in this case, all right? So this is the last part of our branch. 
which is of four I one. So with this, we can simplify further. That's twelve is equal to. Uh, if we are to simplify further, uh, this part of our equation, we can collect our like terms. That is, we are going to have eight I two plus uh zero comma eight times two, which is going to give us uh one comma six plus uh four. I1. All right, so this we can transpose the 1,6 to the other side of the equation, which is going to be a negative 1,6 on this side because it was a positive. So this is going to give us uh 10,4, which is equal to uh 4i1 plus 8i2, of which you can even reduce your equation by 4 if you want. You can reduce your equations or you can just leave it like that. All right. So these are the uh, branches that we had. Uh, sorry for that. These are the branches that we took our equations. That is uh, the loop, uh, first loop and the second loop. We formulated our equations. Now we can calculate the unknown currents uh, from these loops that we had. Uh, so the question is actually to solve for I1 and I2. Uh, these are the currents. So I'm going to take the first equation from this equation here. This is our first equation. So from our first equation, if we are to rewrite this, we are going to have it as 12 I1 plus 14 I2, which is equal to uh, 23,2. Then the second equation, uh, sorry for that. Sorry for that. This is our second equation here uh, that we obtained. So we are going to have this as our second equation, which is 4 I1 plus 8 I2 which is equal to 10,4. So this is what we are going to have on our second equation here so that we can solve our equations. All right, so this was given as a 4i1 plus 8i2, which was equal to 10,4. All right, so based on your elimination, uh, substitution, whatever method that you're going to use, uh, depending with what is best with you. So in this case, I'm going to find I1. That's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to find I1 by doing this. Uh, to, for me to find I1, that means at that moment, I have to eliminate uh, I2. Uh, in this case, if I'm using elimination method, I'm going to eliminate I2. So this is what is happening on I2. You interchange these numbers, the eight and the 14, the coefficients, which means on top, we are going to multiply by eight, uh, on the second equation, you're going to multiply by 14. You just interchange. But in a case where these two equations can be, I mean, these two values can be reduced, you have to reduce in this case uh, so that you work with the smaller values. Like in this case, I can reduce uh, these values. I want you to see what I'm trying to say. If I am to have this, it's 8 on top, 14 below. So I'm going to use this as 8 uh, divided by 14 like this. This is going to give me four over seven. So what does it mean? It means on top, I'm going to multiply by four. Below, I'm going to multiply by seven. So it means here, we are going to multiply by four. We are going to multiply by seven. Instead of these values, we can use reduced values. These are the ones that we are going to multiply uh, the given equations in this case. All right, so that is how you can actually have this part uh, presented okay so that means we can substitute we can multiply uh from the top by four four multiplies everything guys make sure this number it multiplies every everything all right so that means we are going to have uh four times 12 in this case which is going to give us uh 48 i1 four times 14 which is going to give us plus 56i2 equal to 4 times 23,2, which is going to give us 92,8. The same thing with 7. It multiplies everything. 7 times 4, which is 28i1. 7 times 8, which is 56i2, uh, is equal to 7 times 10,4 which is uh, 72, 8 in this case. So by doing this, we have got our equation one, our equation two, so we can subtract. Remember, I told you guys, if the signs are the same, you subtract. If the signs are different, you add. So these two, they are the same, you are going to subtract. So that's equation one minus equation two. Okay, so let's subtract each and every part. Uh, 48 minus 28. This is going to give us a 20 I1. Uh, 56 minus 56, that's a zero. So you're going to remain with the 
92,8 minus 72,8. So from your calculator, this is going to give you a 20. Uh, all right, so divide by 20 both sides so that we can remove this 20 on I1, we remain with a one. So which means I1 is equal to one M. Remember current is measured in amps, so I1 is equal to uh, 1 M. So by doing this, we can uh, actually determine our equation too by substituting into any one of the given equations that we have. We can substitute, in this case, I'm going to take from equation, uh, this equation two, where we are given four I1 uh, plus eight I2, which is equal to 10. You use any guys, any, any of your choice. So from this one, we can substitute our I1, which is one. Remember, I1 is one. Plus eight I2 is equal to 10,4. So that's four times one, which is four. Plus eight I2 is equal to 10,4. So you can transpose the four to the other side of the equation. So this can be a negative four. So that means we are remaining with the eight I2, which is equal to 10,4 minus four, which is going to give us uh, six comma four. So dividing by eight, dividing by eight, both sides, this is going to give us uh, current two, uh, which is uh, in this case, zero comma eight amps. So that's our I2. Uh, which is 0, 0,8 amps. So these are the only currents that we're being given to calculate or to determine from the branches that we had, we only have current one and current two. So sometimes they might even ask us to calculate the value for current one minus current two. You substitute the current one that you got and the current two so that you can subtract. So that was your diagram, guys. And uh, these are the applications that we have or what you're supposed to apply on your key of laws. Uh, so that's what we had from Amazon African Motives, uh, still on industrial electronics entry uh, till we meet again.